Welcome to Model Engineering for Beginners. Machining can be difficult sometimes in the home workshop for various reasons, and here are some common problems. What are the thread forms on these rusty pieces of metal? Sometimes even the thread gauge can be confusing. And how do I cut and machine a big lump of stainless steel? I called him to see my friend Andrew to see if he could shed any light on what these threads were. In the end, we figured it out. At one end, the thread is M10, and at the other end, it's M8. These parts are the mountings for a pair of windows or door tops on my Land Rover. I thought that this was going to be a very simple job. Simply fit the metric die into the die holder and get on with it. Starting off with the M10 thread. But unfortunately not. The job started off badly. I generally work with imperial measurements and imperial parts, so I don't really have a lot of metric stuff. And to successfully fit the die into the die holder, I had to rummage about for a metric allen key. When using digital calipers like this, it's really important to close the jaws and press the zero button. This actually gave a false reading. But either way, I did not have any M10 stainless steel. So phoned Blackgate's engineering, and they didn't have any either. The job is not off to a good start. The main thing is, though, I know what the thread is. And by the way, all this steel looks OK, and some of it would be suitable, but it's not stainless. Most of it is silver steel, which is very accurately ground, but not to 10 millimetres. I bought some 10 millimetre stainless steel bar online, and it should be with me next week. For my Land Rover, I made some extensions to hold the seat belts. It's a very old Land Rover, and it doesn't need seat belts, but I'm too young and beautiful to die. This is definitely stainless steel. I bought it 45 years ago from a scrapyard. I don't really understand the logic of these fixings. The door tops are military door tops and made of aluminium, and they're very good. But look how corroded the mountings are. They were never like this when I owned the Land Rover because I used to grease them and I never tightened them into the tops of the doors. But my friend, the late Ken Rowley, never did that and they corroded away, as you can see. The good news was it was very easy to remove these mountings. One of them just unscrewed from the door because the nut was rusted solid onto the shaft. Anyway, the bottom line is I need to make four of these in stainless steel and I will start that job next week. Today I'm going to start making the seat belt mountings. This piece of stainless steel is just the right size, it's just under 6 inches long, and here I've marked it with a felt tip pen, followed by using a scriber to get the centre point. Then I put it in my metal cutting bandsaw, the larger of the two ones that I have, and I gave up on it. I could have gone on holiday in the time it was taking. Then I looked at the size of the piece of stainless steel and looked at my small boxwood lathe and decided it was time to enlist the help of my very old Smart and Brown lathe, which is much bigger. Six inch centre height, but very robust. Turning a piece of stainless steel this size in the boxwood would have taken a long, long time. It is possible, you just have to do it very slowly. It's all down to what kind of tooling you have in the workshop. This Smart and Brown lathe is currently fitted with a large four-jaw self-centering chuck and it's a very sturdy thing. I'd recently been doing a job on the Smart and Brown that required something holding internally, so it was fitted with outside jaws. I've now changed it, it's fitted with inside jaws, which holds the piece of stainless steel very comfortably. I need to drill a hole all the way through this piece of bar. And as always, I'm starting off by using a centre drill. This, by the way, is not really a precision part. It's going to be a very strong part. It's to hold the seat belt a little bit higher, because when I fit the seat belt to myself in the Land Rover, it's too low and it clamps my arm, which is not very good, really. The Series 2A Land Rover from 1971 did not have the refinements of power steering so I need all the strength in my arms I can muster, and having my arms tied back with the seat belt was not going to be a good idea. Once I've drilled all the way through this piece of bar, I will then part it off into two pieces of bar. But before that, I'd like to show you the drilling technique. 
I'm using a 5 16 of an inch diameter drill bit, which is too small. And as soon as this gets three quarters of the way down into the hole, it starts to bind. To lubricate the drill bit, I'm using some superheated steam oil. It's a very good extreme pressure lubricant. I also use superheated steam oil when I'm threading using taps and dies. I've selected a larger drill bit now because this is going to go into the hole and drill it a bit deeper. A quick mention, be careful with this swarf, it is razor sharp. You can see here, I removed it with a pair of pliers. As you can see, the chuck is still spinning, but it's only the drag of the clutch. There isn't any real power. Once I'd drilled as far as I could with the larger drill bit, I went back to the smaller one, and the clearance allows the swarf to get away so it doesn't bind. Don't forget, this is not like it is in industry. I'm making quite a large part for the small equipment that I have. I changed the motor on the Smart and Brown lathe when I first got it. The motor that was originally fitted to this was a three-speed, three-phase, two-horsepower motor. OK, so I lost some speeds, but it's much more forgiving with the one-horsepower motor that I fitted to it. Because of changing the drills to let the swarf get away, I can now drill this hole quite deep. I've gone up a drill size, as you can see, which once again will go down as far as it possibly can before it starts to jam up. Then I'll refit the previous one and drill a bit deeper until I get the full length of the drill bit down in the hole. Now it's time for the final size, half an inch. This is a good way of doing it. Try running the lathe slower and feed in a half inch diameter drill from the beginning and you'll soon lose the will to live, I do anyway. The outside of this piece of stainless steel is a bit too big and it's damaged. So I'm removing some metal, not a lot, just a fine cut and this wasn't enough so I went back and repeated the process. Very shortly I will end up with two pieces of metal that look very much like this. But not yet, I'm taking a very fine cut I'm going all the way down, then I'm going to turn it round in the chuck and come at it from the other end. Quite a lot of swarf is mounting up. Be careful with this type of swarf for two reasons. One is it's still, like the other stuff, very sharp and it's also extremely hot. If you do cut yourself on any of this swarf, the only good thing I can say is the wound will be self-cauterizing, but still very painful. This is not engineering, it's more like black magic. That's it for now, stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.